Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stacking Chairs, the youth ministry podcast about all things concerning youth ministry. And uh, so whether you're in youth ministry, children's ministry, camping ministry, any way that you are reaching youth with the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, we want to talk about things that are applicable to you and to your ministry. I'm Kyle Gray. I get to be one of the hosts here. My other host, Josh, is out. He's not feeling too well. He's not able to be here. But I have my good friend, Mike Breen. Hey. Hey, Mike. How you doing, Mike, man? <laughs> I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, so, Mike, they know a little bit about me. Tell us a little bit about you. Who are you? What do you do? What's your favorite color? Oh, blue. Oh. Definitely blue. Why blue? Uh, my wife says it. You know, when I wear blue, it brings out my it, eyes. It makes your eyes it's, pop. It's the only good thing about me. <laughs> it really is. I don't like the your only, beard. I don't yeah. like how tall you are. Yeah. But blue. So blue, I'll start there. Up. I'll okay. start there. Yeah. My name is Mike. I'm a student pastor. I, I've been uh, in student ministry now for about, what, 11 or 12 years. That's awesome. uh, most of my ministry, I guess you could say, like the, the whole time I've been in full-time ministry has been down in uh, Fort Worth, Texas mm -hmm. and at a, a church, Hillside Community Church uh, that I've loved, loved being a part of, loved being a part of that community. And uh, serving students, serving parents, you know, partnering with parents. Now so. you actually had a chance to go, and you were a you were an intern there, and then you mm -hmm. left, and then they actually said, "Hey, come back and be here full time." They did. That's they did. pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it, it really speaks to. I always tell students the closer that they're getting to graduating high school, uh, no matter what they're trying to do, and then when they're in college, like take advantage of your internships, mm -hmm. right? Like take advantage of making relationships with companies, you know, business, uh, ministry, wherever it is. Uh, because when you graduate like college or whatever your, your education is after that's all, you know, no, oh, absolutely. They're the only ones that know you and you're the only one that you kind of know them now, Yeah, you know, whether or not you really want to work there or you <laughs> don't want to work there, <laughs> you know? And so, yeah, we had in, in, you know, 2006, I got a chance to intern over the summer there uh, and got my kind of feet wet in a lot of different areas, hmm. children's ministry, student ministry, a little bit of adult ministry and, uh, knew at the end of that summer, you know, I, I don't, sometimes you don't know if you can like pray things to God. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever had those moments. Yeah. And, uh, I just said, God, I don't, I don't know if I can really ask this of you, but I would love for that to be the first place that I work when I get out of, like yeah. when I graduate college, That's awesome. you know, and, uh, and you know, he answered that with a yes. And I've, enjoyed it so much. So you've been there, you said for 11 years. It's 2010. So yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's, it's been a while. It's so a while. that's, that like takes the national normal average of a youth pastor's time. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> Choke holds I'm bringing it. it way up. Yes. So I'm bringing it way up. Let's, let's be, let's be real here. Yes, yes. There probably has not been more than enough opportunity or reason to say I'm out. I'm, I'm done. I could leave now and I could walk out and I could just be like done with this thing, but you're still there. So what, what has kept you in that situation? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy you, you ask that. And I'm happy that we have a chance to talk about this on a, this platform. I think, uh, when I was at school, when I was at, I, I should say, when I was in college, and I was getting a, a biblical studies degree. I, I remember professors talking about student ministry. Mm. And at the time, like student ministry over the past couple of decades has been in a little bit of a, a spot of transition, I think, because most, most uh, professors, pastors that are aged in student ministry are now looking back and have been looking back for the last couple of decades. And they're saying, wait a second. Like that statistic that you mentioned, I think the average student pastor stays at a student ministry somewhere between two and a half years and three and a half years. Like it's, yeah. it's that quick. It's crazy. And I remember, you know, sitting in that classroom and hearing my professors talk about the fact that if you are getting into student ministry, you need to seriously consider that it is not just a stepping stone, you know, or a block for you to get to the next position in the church, All Right. that it is, it is a, a moment <laughs> and a ministry that needs consistency. Those students cannot just have people jumping in and out of their lives every few years as pastors come in, get some experience and move on. And I'm going to be honest, what I've learned in student ministry is that student ministry does equip you for the next job. It oh, really cool. does. Yeah. Um, because a student ministry is a small church within the church, right? Mm, yeah. They do everything that the head pastor does in a way, yeah. just with less people and a less mature audience. Well, sometimes less <laughs> yeah, mature. Yeah, some, sometimes. All right. Um, they do everything. So you are teaching. You are learning how to, you know, lead a worship team. You're learning how to lead volunteers. Uh, you know, you're doing all of these things. And because you're doing all of these, these things, you're gaining, you're gaining, um, 
wisdom and experience figuring out like when we make this decision, it affects this side of our ministry, right? And oh, yeah. when we do something over here, it now either is a pro or a con to something over here. And so, you know, being a student pastor and the amount of things that you oversee, it does really prepare you. Hmm. And yet I never wanted my position in student ministry to be something that was just preparing me for something else. Right. You know, I, I wanted to make sure that I was sticking around long enough and, and have being that relational, you know, consistent figure in students' lives. Uh, I mean, it takes, it takes a couple of years to even just like get known yeah, and to know yeah. people and families. And, well, well, and you, you said know. three years, that's not even the whole cycle of a student's ninth through 12th grade. Right. So right. how, how in the world are you, I mean, you, you take a youth pastor, which I, I don't, I don't know who your, your youth pastor was. Mm -hmm. I know my youth pastor pr played a pretty heavy role in my life. Yeah. Um, I, there are youth ministry leaders, all these, and, and that's the other crazy thing is a lot of youth ministry leaders stick around sometimes longer than the youth, the pastor, youth pastor does, but, yeah. but, but you're going through these, uh, situations in life. You're going through, you know, you know, what am I going to be when I grow up? All the your big questions that you would go to your youth pastor at next thing, you know, Oh, I'm sorry. He made it all the way up to your senior year and he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Or you got a new guy. And, and listen, I'm not saying that God doesn't have times where he moves you. I know, I know some right, of you out there right, right now going, well, Kyle, you don't know my situation. You're right. I don't know your situation. I'm just saying it, it, it concerns me when it's that short of a time, when you think of the span of your little church. Right. Right. And obviously at some point, I'm probably going to have to stop being a student pastor, right? Like that's, that's obvious. You don't want to be an 89 year old. But I pastor? think intent is really the big thing. Right. I don't, I, I'm not sure anybody should get into student ministry with the intent that they are as quickly as possible moving on to the next position, right? Mm -hmm. That, that, that is literally their intent. You're doing a disservice to, to the students. You're doing a disservice to, um, you know, the parents and I'm not going to speak in universal, like you never should, yeah. but I think that's a, that's a big part of it <laughs> is my intent was always. I'm here for at least five years before I even consider anything else. Right. right? And now right. I'm 11, 12, you know, coming up on 12 years. It's awesome. And, and sure, there's going to be a moment where I'm not cool enough or I don't, you know, I don't know the lingo or, you know, what's happening on social media. I never know what's happening on social media. To be <laughs> and Mike, just, just, you know, but that, that cool moment passed you and I it, both. Well, <laughs> I mean, I haven't been cool since I was 21. Okay. So the students have always known that's yeah. not what Mike is about, right. uh, is, is wearing the right things or having the right shoes or, you know, being trendy on social media. It's just always been about that relational consistency, the love acceptance, uh, being able to talk about anything, mm. you know, that those are the things that they know they're going to get from me, you know? I, and because of that, guess what? I don't have to be cool to do my ministry. Like right. I don't lose, I don't lose any influence when I don't know what's happening on social media or right. I haven't watched the latest video right. because that's never been what it's, right. what, it, what our relationship has been built on from the beginning. So right. it has bought me some time on my mid thirties, you, you know, to still be able to, that's right. To, to have some type of freshness. You well, know? you, 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 you kind of bring up a good subject, which is what I want to talk about today. A couple years ago, actually I was, I was looking at it. It was, it was, it was a long quite time. a I few think it was years 2011 ago. Yeah. Or 12. You yeah. spoke for a conference that I held yeah. and, uh, and we talked about you coming in and just talking about something that you were passionate about. And, uh, and, and you just, you just mentioned the idea of relational conversation, building, building a conversational di uh, discipleship or mentorship with these students. I know you didn't use those words specifically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one of the things that you talk or the main thing that you talked about was asking good questions. Mm. Now, if, if you know me, I don't think I've ever had a time in my life where I haven't had words to say. And if I have felt like that, I've just filled it in with other words I probably shouldn't say. <laughs> but, uh, but there is something powerful about asking, even sometimes not the best question, but just asking questions. Why, yeah. why do you think that that's so important as you're developing relationships with these young people? Yeah, it's, it's really interesting that that early on in my ministry, I was kind of picking up some of these very uh, core thought processes of how to do ministry, you know? And I think that going into that conference, when we were discussing that, if I can remember correctly, 
you know, you kind of asked me a little bit about like, what do you think would be a good topic? And I had been reading through the gospels and I, I had just been noticing how often Jesus asked questions. Hmm. Instead of giving the answer right away, he asked the question first, right? Mm. And I know that some of that is is because that's, you know, was was very central to, uh, you know, Hebrew teaching, you know, the way that the Jewish thought, you know, and how they they educated their audiences. But but it's it's a beautiful thing when you sit back and you're like, wait, Jesus, God himself on earth, instead of always talking mm-hmm. and always telling, mm-hmm would actually ask a question, right? Yeah. If anybody has the right to constantly be talking <laughs> Just and shut constantly up. Let me like tell you what to do. informing his yeah. audience yeah. exactly what should be happening at every moment, right? right? It's him. Yeah. And yet, I think he just, because he is so infinitely wise, mm-hmm. realizes there is power behind questions. And we always see Jesus asking questions in order to kind of maneuver a conversation towards a deeper level of understanding and spiritual truth, right? Yeah. Uh, it, he never asked a question without some type of great intention to get someone there. Hmm. Right? And so when we were talking about the conference, I thought, man, how have I been implementing this in my ministry? How has this shaped how I think through things? Uh, and how do I need to start thinking through things? And then just being able to have that conversation while we were at, you know, while we're at that conference. Well, and I remember you specifically honed in on one of your students um, who's uh, now grown up, he's married, uh, participated, you know, moving on. But I remember you talking about the difference was just, it wasn't even in your, okay, let's sit down and have this meeting. Uh, Let's, let's get together. It was the driving him, riding around in the car with him, driving him to, to go pick something up from Walmart or dropping him off after different things. What about those times in the car, not in maybe a formal setting, do you think opens up the conversation for students? D- d- I guess here's, here's my question. To you. Yeah. Do you think environment changes the tone of the conversation? Well, it, I mean, no doubt. It, it definitely changes the, <laughs> I mean, if their parent is standing right there, <laughs> guess what? The environment is different. Talk to me about your how purity. Yeah. How Dad, we're going to discuss things is, <laughs> yeah. is different in, in different environments with the people that are around. I, I think one of the areas that, that this, you know, has, has kind of impacted me. And one of the points that I brought up at that conference is that I have to be as a student pastor. And this doesn't matter if you have 200 kids in your ministry, you have 20 kids in your ministry, right? Mm -hmm. There's obviously going to be a little bit of a difference in how this relates to your context, but I have to be a student of my students, Hmm. right? I have Mm -hmm. to be a student of my students. Now, if you have, if you have student ministry that is well into the hundreds, you aren't going to be able to be a student of every single student in there to, to an extent. right? Right. Um, but, but if you have, you know, those that you have more influence over in the bigger student ministries, guess what? You're responsible to be a student of them. You're responsible to figure out when are the moments when they're the most open to dialogue? Yeah. What are the moments that I can slip in a question? Uh, when are they ready to hear something that is going to be really hard for them to hear? And, and you know, if you, if you are a student pastor of a smaller ministry, then you really have the ability to be a student of all of your students Yeah. for each one of them to be learning them and like figuring things out and going and asking yourself those questions as you're meeting with them, even, you know, even just having a very high relational intelligence, like that IQ that comes of, you know, building relationships and, and just kind of you know, knowing those things, figuring out their sport, spiritual maturity, their context. And some of that comes with just asking questions, you yeah. know, just asking questions of them. And those are the things that just happen naturally when you are able to take some time completely doing random things. You know, like I, I think about some of the conversations that I had with my parents growing up. Okay. And when they were like formal conversations, they weren't, they weren't as good they weren't as real. when they were yeah. just natural, yeah. you know? Yeah. And so obviously there is a spot for formal conversation. Mm -hmm. It has to happen at times. There's moments when I have to look at a student and normally what I do is I go, come on, let's go. All right. Like, all right, we're going to go talk about something that just went down Yep. and we have to have a formal conversation. But I have waited at times years. I'm not, I'm not joking. 
I've waited years to ask a student a question that I have just been thinking about for them, wow. praying over and just sat and thought when the moment is right and at some point it's going to be, this question needs to be asked of them. Do, do you think that that's, I, I, as, as you're talking through this, I, I'm reminded of the Philippians 2 passage that just talks about how Jesus came in humility. Do you think mm-hmm. that that had to do with a little bit of, of that humility being, being displayed, asking a question rather than making a statement? Yeah, I, some of it is, some of it definitely, you know, does revolve around that. I think, I think for, for us, so obviously we're going to like compare ourselves to perfection here. Sure. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit difficult. Yeah. I, I, I just, for me, I think what's shaped my, my thought process is I have found in the moments now, and obviously I speak on stage a lot, so I have to say things on stage and talk for, you know, minutes right. at, you know. But there are moments when I'm just in these relationships with my students that I have to realize. And sometimes I catch myself because the moments when I feel my mouth running the most, it's the moment when I feel like I have to be in control of this and I have to get them to understand what needs to be understood right now. Okay. And so some of this, some of the freedom that you feel when you start just thinking about, okay, let me, you know, reframe how I think through this subject of asking questions. Some of the freedom comes with the fact that, hey, we have someone called the Holy Spirit and he's a lot better at teaching them right. than Mike is. Right. Right. Yeah. And when I am just able to kind of remove myself and just say, Mike, just ask him a question yeah, and let the spirit work from there. Like mm. just get their brain moving. Yeah. And then whether it's a prayer together out loud, whether it's a prayer inwardly, it's just like spirit from this point on, right. You're getting them where they need to go. And I'm, I'm there to support and I'm there to continue to help and guide and be there to have conversations. But when you realize that as someone in ministry, even someone that's not in ministry, but they're just have a very big heart for outreach and they're very intentional with their time. When you realize that, that like, it doesn't have to be you. Mm. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. You go, okay, I don't have to talk for 15 minutes and bore this student to death. Right. Like, I don't have to do it. Right. I just asked, I just have to ask them a really good question sometimes. Right. They, they, they go, ah, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the spirit just starts moving. And what a freeing feeling when you realize that, that, the spirit is so much better at ministering, better at ministering to your students than you are. Oh, you absolutely. To, to just back off of it sometimes. Yeah. And, and, you know, the, the worst thing that I want to do is lecture a student to death to right. where they're just like, uh. well, and you know that there's that moment and typically you can see it in their eyes. Yeah. If you're paying more attention, it's more evident in their body language before they display it in their eyes. Yeah. But there's that moment where they're like, okay, I need you to shut up right now. <laughs> yeah. I've stopped listening about yeah. seven minutes ago. And you're like, but that's when I made my best point. And yeah. you know, yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's people that are out there and, and this is probably a hard uh, question to ask, but are there any, are there any questions that you just keep in almost your mental hopper of, Hey, here's how I get a conversation going, or here's how I help a student to open up, uh, maybe a student that's been a little closed or, or, or even just some good conversational questions. Do you have any ones that you say, Hey, these are ones I typically go to that that you can share? I, I want to, I'm going to give you like a few seconds while I'm talking to think about this. Okay. okay? Because it, our audience also could be thinking about this as well. Right. What are the questions that you have been asked in your life that have made the biggest impact? Hmm. Right. So think about that yeah. for a moment and then I'm going to come yeah. back to you. You okay. better have something okay. ready. Okay. But I, I remember a moment where I was laying in bed, reading a book called Kingdom Called Desire by Rick McKinley. Okay. And in the beginning chapters, he, he asks this question over and over and over again. He said, what do you want? Hmm. What do you want? What is your desire? Hmm. You know? And he said, even if it's not God right now, what is it? Yeah. Just be honest. Yeah. What is it? And I remember sitting there and I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm reading in bed. My wife is already asleep. And that question haunted me Hmm. for 24 hours. What do I want? Hmm. Is it God? And that question pierced to, and I'll just be honest with you, that question pierced to kind of the the center of me. And at that time, what I wanted, honestly, being in ministry, growing up in a, a fairly wealthy family, 
I just wanted financial security. Mm. Like that's what I wanted for me. That's what I wanted for my family for the future. And so ministry, I was like uncertain of, oh God, are you going to care for me? You're going to take, you know, is, are things going to be as easy for like me to be able to pay for my kids college someday, uh, get our house, you know, like all of those things. And that question, it haunted me until I just came to that admission with God of like, God, what do I really want? Mm. Do I want you right now? Mm. Or do I just want the things you give, you know? And, and so that has really, that has always been a question that I come back to just personally and analyze, you know, just kind of having a little bit of, um, you know, self-awareness yeah. of like right now, Mike, what do you want? Right. That, that question is in a good way haunted me yep. for a decade, Yeah. you know, and it's a question that I've asked students before. What do you want? Yeah. You know, um, another big question, and I, I'm giving you a few you more, give, you a give few me a few more, more minutes. Right, I can good. tell you have, um, nothing, <laughs> you have nothing going on right now. All right. Is how's that working for you? Oh, I love asking right? that question. That's oh, a I, great I, one. I love, I, as you were talking about that, my, one of my questions was, what's the win for you here? Right. Like I, people have asked me that where I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Right. You know? Right. So it's actually something that we're going to talk about tonight is our, our, our thoughts and our beliefs. They have consequences. Hmm. Right. And how often does a student or an adult hmm find themselves with the consequences, but they never hold their belief accountable. Right. Right. They just move on to the next situation, carrying those same beliefs into it. Right. Mm. And so that question, how's that working out for you? Or what is the win here? Right. Or do you like where you are now more than you were a year ago based off of how you're thinking through this? Yeah. Um, Mm. some other ones that kind of hit to the core as well, because that's that student or that, that parent or that adult who, whatever your ministry is, or even maybe like upper levels of children's ministry, right? That person is now faced Mm. to face with that fact of, oh, I have to analyze something taking place in core levels of my heart, my mind, my soul, right? Yeah. Of these beliefs that I have. And so that's another one that just kind of hits, it cuts, Mm. you know, right right through that. So is there any, any other questions? So, so one, I remember somebody asking me one time, which so much of, um, discipleship processes that I've been a part of can be more about the discipler saying, okay, I want to go there. We're going to go there. And it's those other, it's those couple people along the line that said, that asked the question, Kyle, what do you, vi- what, what do you value mm-hmm. or what do you find value in or what makes you feel valued? Mm-hmm. And, and for me to be able to kind of think about that, because I'll be honest with you, growing up, there were some times I knew what I valued. There were other times I thought I knew what I valued. Yeah. And there, then there were those perplexing times. I didn't know if I could find value in anything. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just kind of walking through getting to know that student. Every single one of them is individual. I I, I don't know if you've done this. I know I've done this. I had a really good question with this person over here and I tried to translate it and ask this person over here. And sometimes it was not a good good question, you know? Yeah. Well, and you know, like even in the, you know, our discipling ministry that we do on Sunday mornings. I like to have as many questions as possible for the students so that they're thinking through and answering things. Mm -hmm. There's just some, like one of the worst things is when you ask a dumb question oh. or like two, the one that no one in the class wants to answer because yeah. it's too obvious, yeah. you know, Jesus. And, and there's moments where even when I throw a question out and it's kind of fuzzy what I'm trying to get at or, you know, and I'm just like, that's a bad question. Yeah. Let me, let me start over. So Do you just, own that from stage? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, everybody yeah, my students know. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll call my myself out. Mike's like, fast. like, no yeah. shame in this game. Yeah, no, no shame. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, we're being authentic. We're living real yeah. lives together. Yeah. Like, guys, that was a really bad question. Okay. Or let me figure out how to rephrase that because oh, that yeah. sounds stupid. You know. So, so no shame. Here's here's even something because some I, I know that I, I know that there are some personalities out there that are like Mike, but you have to say something. Yeah. You can't just always <laughs> ask questions. You know uh-huh. that that guy. Yeah. And, and I, I get it. Here's something that I even, we, we did a training back in September for our student ministry leaders. And we had our, our ministry leader, our director at our church that does more of the counseling and care side of things. 
And she came in and she said something that even made me think, okay, this is even another question Mm. before you get to the teaching or discipling side of it. Here's another question. She said, when you are sitting and listening with a student as a leader, okay, especially this is going back to being a student of students. Okay. Because sometimes you can tell this student based off of their personality or the predicament they find themselves in. Sometimes they, you can tell they already want an answer. Like they're telling you something because they need to know, like, how should I be looking at this? And so in that situation, you don't really have to ask a question because you can just tell they're ready. Like they right. are ready to receive what you have. But then there are some students that are a little bit more headstrong or opinionated or think they know the situation. Mm-hmm. And at times they're even telling you how dysfunctional something is, but they're like proud of it. Right. You know, we've all right. had that, right. that right. conversation right. Yeah. where they're like, I'm ruining my life and it's awesome. It's like awesome. It looks, I'm just thinking so yeah. well through this. Yeah. And you're sitting there like, oh, in 10 years, this is going to be yeah. a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And she said at this, at this, you know, at this uh, training meeting that we had, she said, sometimes you have to ask them for the right to speak into a situation. Huh? Right. And I thought, hmm, even when you know you have to say something, start it with a question. Yeah. Because how many of your students, children, you know, adult ministry, whatever you're in, how many times are they at home or with other other authority figures in their lives? Oh, yeah. And they're getting all of this advice on what they should do, but they haven't been asked right. for the right to say those things. Right. Right. And like you said, that glazed look of, oh my word, will this person shut up already? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the last thing that I want my students to ever think of me is that Mike is just going to barge in without kind of the right to do it. Right. Because guess what? That just ruins some of my ministry for the next time I have a conversation with this person. Now I have to go back and I have to kind of undo some things like what they have built up in their heads. Oh, that's just Mike. He's going to handle it like that. But to be able to say, I loved it when she said it, to be able to say, do you mind if I I speak into this a little bit? Hmm. And I'm like, what a great question. Oh, absolutely. Because if they say no, I say, all right. Okay. That's fine. And and most of the time they're like, well, but, but, but. But t- tell me, tell me, what, yeah. what do you, what do you, we want, I think we genuinely want people to love us enough to speak into, yeah. into our lives, but uh, that's such a powerful thing. No, yeah. And, and they want it, but for them to give you the right to do it oh, yeah. is so empowering for a student and it's a relational builder, man. It, oh yeah. It connects them now with the, okay, this dude's different, mm-hmm. right? This guy is different. Right. Like he's just not going to barge into my life and say right. whatever he thinks that needs to happen. He wants to partner with me right. in my life. He wants my permission to share these things. Yeah. And that's a powerful thing, man. That's, oh, yeah. that's so powerful that, that gains so much trust, right? Because you were the one person that just said, I know you're 14, right? Yeah. I know you have no idea what you're doing in life. You got no clue. Okay? But oh, guess yeah. what? Even though you're that old or you're that young, I'm still going to treat you with respect yeah. and as a human being yeah. and start treating you like a young adult yeah. and ask you if I can have permission to speak into a situation. That's so powerful. That is. That's so powerful. It is. It can't be unsaid. So even in the mo- those moments where you have to say something, mm. start with that question. Well, and, and I think this is, this is a tough thing to do. This, this, probably doesn't come naturally for a lot of people in ministry. It doesn't probably doesn't come naturally for a lot of people at all. And that's kind of the, the purpose of what we want. It's like stacking chairs. Nobody wants to be the person stacking the chairs. It's hard work. It's grunt work, but it has to get done because it sets you up for success Hmm. and being able to pull off effective ministry. And so that's why we want to talk about some of these different things. Well, we can go on and on and on. Listen, if you want to connect uh, with, with any of us, you can, you can reach out to us, uh, uh, at the information on the lower thirds here below or in the description. Listen, we'd love to get some good ideas of questions that you have or even stories that you have. Mike, it's time for us to move into a little segment that we like to call small group. Small group. Small group. Small group. You know, it's a time where you get a little real. Okay. You might even get a little raw. Okay. You, you might even be able to share something maybe a little embarrassing. Okay. And uh, so I, I've asked a question. I, I've asked a question. What question did I, you ask? I know. It's amazing. I'm amazing. Getting- Oh, giving you permission. To... Mike, do I have your permission to ask this question? You do. Thank you. 
<laughs> so the question that I asked was, what is a funny flop during a ministry night or event that you've had happen? I did tell these people, these may be shared. I got some ideas. I cannot share with you all the different things, which lets me know these people have participated yes. in student ministry. Yes. Uh, but oh, the- man. <laughs> so, so, I, here's, here's how I view a good student ministry event. There's a balance between chaos uh-huh. right, uh-huh. and order. Oh, absolutely. And if it's on one side or the other too much, yeah. it's not student ministry. No. But when you find it right yeah. in the middle, mm-hmm. anything can happen oh, at absolutely. any moment. Oh, and you have to be ready. Yes. So so the one that I'm going to read. <laughs> okay, the that's, one, the only, that's the only one. <laughs> the one I might read is this. Oh, uh, somebody said this. I was on stage mid-sermon, and without warning, I had to immediately leave the stage, go to the bathroom, and throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Two oh. minutes later, I came back, and everyone was just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> waiting on me. I hope they turn their mic off, man. Can you imagine if, if those kids were sitting out there and that mic was still on? Oh, the things that that student I, pastor was yelling in, I, in between. I, I, <laughs> right. I wish oh, I wish I could man. make the sound, but I know that there are some people that yeah. just sympathetic pukers. You, those you can't. Gag, yeah, the gag reflex. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Like, I, I've, I've heard different Stop. <laughs> Dylan, our sound man is. Um, oh, man. I am a sympathetic puker. Yes. I, I cannot be around. Like, like it, I had to brace myself even to read this story because I sat there and I thought, okay, how in the world is this going to go? You know? Oh, man. Oh, man. Like, I, I, I want to ask the guy, what were you preaching on? <laughs> <laughs> like, do you address it? Uh, Are you like, uh, hey, guys, just went and uh, threw my guts out. Like, do you say that or do you just like pick back up? You know, I, I, that's what I'm wondering. I've heard of people going to the bathroom with their mic on. Oh, my goodness. I've never heard of people vomiting. I think I would like to see the response. I, like, I, I hey, would. Did, you, did that mic get turned off? I, I wish I had asked the guy. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't ask the follow up question. So good. So, Mike, has anything ever happened to you mid service or mid event or during a thing? Yeah. That you can share. <laughs> well, I I don't draw things anymore oh, on the yeah. stage. <laughs> Everything is pre-drawn. Yeah, because, because it's gotten dicey. Oh, Which, I'm not gonna say what it is, but I think everybody kind of knows. Well, and, what has happened. and you know, every yeah. student out there is waiting oh. for you to draw something or yeah. say something. Yeah. I, I have a couple different things that I have said from on stage that my students love to remind me about. Yeah. Hey, remember that time that you said? Uh, Man, that's awesome. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I also have different phrases that I constantly go back to. Mm. Maybe, just maybe is one of mine. Or mm. man, that's awesome. There's a degree to it. And they, they like, there's a degree to it, to which. But uh, good. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no more drawing for Mike. No. Mike doesn't draw on stage anymore. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, I, this speaks to the testament of, of how amazing my church is. They didn't even get a conversation with the elders over it. Though. No, they, no. Were, they were like, hey, it happens. They were like, it happens you know, to us all. Get back in the game, man. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, like, they didn't even ask you a good question. No, it was just the uh, happens. Wow. Keep, keep moving. Wow. Yep. Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today for Stacking Chairs. Again, just a, just a joy to be able to be with you all. Uh, we're so thankful for you being in ministry. Hey, do me a favor. Stay in ministry. That reason that is prompting you to just give up and walk out. Stick around. Do the hard work. Stack the chairs. Ask good questions because mm-hmm. you don't know who you're pouring into. But I know that God does, and he wants to use them in incredible ways in the same way that he wants to use you. Thanks for for sticking around. Mike, thanks for being my co-host today. Yes, thank you. I appreciate that.